Like two kids, are we, May? Why shouldn't we if that's the way we feel? Who has more fun than kids, anyhow? Oh, I wish next week would hurry up and get here. You couldn't do anything about rushing it, could you? No, that doesn't mean I haven't tried. Last night I put on my bridal gown, closed my eyes, and said to myself, This time next week I'll be Mrs. Dan Sanford. <laughs> oh, Dan, you've made me so happy. Don't ever disappoint me, will you? I'll try not to. May I... I have something I want to... No, no, not right now, Dan. There'll be no talking for the next 30 seconds. That's an order. May, let's stop for a minute and be sensible. Who wants to be sensible after next week? I'll be sensible for the rest of my life. There may not be a next week if you listen to what I'm going to tell you. Never heard a better reason for not listening to anything in my whole life. Besides, I don't have to listen, Dan. I know what you're going to tell me. You're going to tell me what business you're in. But I already know. You... You do? Certainly. And I'm going to help you. Even though I know your business is murder. Nervous, are you, Dan? Who? Oh, me, Professor? No, I'm I'm not nervous. Nothing to be nervous about. You have the rope? Yeah, yeah, sure, I have it. See? It's a noose. Just like you told me. All right, then. Open the door quietly. You'll find your victim seated in a chair, his back to the door. All right. You are nervous, aren't you? What is it, Dan? The job or the girl you're going to marry next week? I'm okay, I tell you. Never mind telling me. Show me. You just watch. Very well. The door, Dan. Quietly. Hold the rope ready. That's right. Walk over slowly. All right, all right. Now! Hey, oh, you fool! Oh, Dan, you fool! You haven't done anything! Let go of the rope! All right, Billy. Take it off your neck. Only back her up, Professor. This guy could have killed me with that rope. That was the general idea of the dress rehearsal. Only it didn't work. <sighs> Dan, if that rope were around Billy's neck properly, he'd have made no outcry. I've explained that to you a dozen times. I tried, Professor. Yes, I imagine you did. I would suggest you watch Billy demonstrate the technique. He's already done two perfect jobs on victims for me. Assignments on which he acquitted himself admirably. Oh, was it nothing, Professor? I think it was. I'll show Dan how you do it, Billy. After all, he's one of us now. And he should be trained. Holy mackerel, I've showed him a thousand times already. Look, stupid, you grab the rope like this. See? Yeah. You slip it over a guy's head. Then Never you mind doing it now. You... Show him when you two are alone. I'd rather you both left me alone at the moment. Hey, you gonna play that music box again? The new music box, Billy. The one you brought back to me after your last assignment. Ah, it's a beautiful addition to my collection. Would you like to listen to it? Yeah, I would. Very good. Listen. Ah, isn't that beautiful? Not to me, it ain't. Well, you wouldn't understand. Do you, Dan? Well, do you understand how these music boxes I have in this room represent so much to me? How they make me an individual, apart and above everyone in this world? Well, I don't exactly understand them, Professor. Very few people would. But it doesn't matter. Dan, hmm? I have an assignment for you. Your first. Yes, Professor? There is a beautiful music box, a most unusual music box in the possession of a man named Daly. I want it, Dan. Tomorrow night. Yes, Professor. The music box is in his safe. I'll give you a plan of the room and leave the rest to you. Daly is very wealthy. 
There'll be money and jewels in the safe. What do I do with them? You'll bring them back to me, of course. And you'll receive your share. But the music box you bring back, that belongs to me alone. <laughs> Sit down, Markham, sit down. Nice of you to drop into my office. Thank you, Vance. Always glad to see you. I had a phone, except that this is something I'd like to talk to you about in person. The district attorney making a personal appearance. Be careful, Markham. We will have a review of this meeting in variety. <laughs> You'd have nothing to print, Vance, because that's exactly what we have in two identical murders which have occurred in the past two weeks. Oh? Sounds interesting, my friend. What's the complete story? It's just this. Two wealthy men in this city have been killed, strangled by a rope. Apparently, they interrupted robberies in their homes because the safes of both had been ransacked. We know a lot of money and securities were stolen. And the killer left no indication of his identity? None we can find. Sergeant Heath's looking for some kind of a lead right now. He's been working on the murder since they happened. Heath's a good man. If there's anything to be found, he'll uncover it. What did you want me to do? Find whoever it is who is responsible for the killings. Mm -hmm. Only I can give you nothing at all to work on, Vance, except that I'm reasonably certain both were done by the same man or men. That isn't much, is it, Markham? No. I'll tell you something very strange, though. I'd rather have one little clue than too many. Too many clues are confusing. I understand. I wish I could... Oh, telephones have no manners, have they? Just a minute, Markham. Vance speaking. Hi, Vance. It's Sergeant Heath, homicide. Uh, district attorney isn't there by any chance, is he? Why, yes, he is. Oh, his secretary wasn't sure if he was going to see you or not. Uh, put him on, will you? Certainly. For you, Markham, it's Heath. Thank you. Yes, Heath? Mr. Markham, I think maybe we're getting a break in those rope killings. I, I checked the stuff stolen from both of the men, and, and guess what? Heath, please. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. You see, both of the dead guys are not only rich, but they each had a music box in their safe. Not one of those five and dime things, but, but real valuable antiques. Uh -huh. you know, I think that means something. Yes, it might. Well, thanks for letting me know, Heath. No, it's okay, D.A. So long. Bye. Did you hear that, Vance? Yes, I did. Very interesting, Markham. It isn't to me. Not until I find out what is meant by the fact that two music boxes were stolen. You want to know what it means? I'll tell you. It means that the killer has made his first mistake. The French doors are right there, Dan. They open to the library. The safe is in the library. Thanks, May. You've been wonderful. I haven't done anything I didn't want to. You're the man I love, the man I'm going to marry. This is the work you picked out for yourself, and I've got to help you. You've been perfect. Getting a job as a maid in this house, getting me the combination of the safe just so my first assignment for the professor will work out. Honey, I can't thank you enough. Don't try. I left the French doors unlocked before I left. Let's go, Dan. Let's get this over with. All right. Here's for the doors. Oh, I should have oiled them. Ah, nobody heard that. Come on in. Okay. Use your flashlight, May. <laughs> Here we are. There's the safe right over there, Dan. I see it now. Hold the light on this piece of paper for a minute. Sure. Twelve left, thirteen right, fourteen left, one right. It's the combination. Now throw that beam on the safe dial. There it is. Put your glove on and go to work. Right, yeah. No fingerprints on this job. Just one music box in the safe for the professor and part of the money in the safe for us. Work fast, Dan, please. Don't get nervous, honey. We're all right. If anybody interrupts us, I have this rope the professor gave me. I had to know how to use it. Believe me, I do. I hope you don't have to, Dan. I know. I don't want to either. But if it has to be somebody's neck or eyes, believe me, it's going to be somebody else's. Dan. Huh? What? I thought I heard a noise just now. A footstep. I didn't hear any... Yeah. I do. Somebody's coming. I must have woke somebody up. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, you stay right here. I'm going over to the door. My rope and me are going to surprise whoever it is. Dan, the doorknob's turning. I know, I see it. What's going on here? Nothing you're going to remember, friend. Dan! Oh, oh. Dan, Dan no. don't do it. Leave him alone. Don't kill him. Let's get out of here, Dan, please. <laughs> Dan, you've done it. You murdered him. Let's get out, Dan, while we have a chance. All right, all right. I guess we'd better... 
Only what'll the professor say when I tell him I didn't get his music box? Yes, I understand, Ben. I understand very well what happened. Well, I'm glad, Professor. You see, it, it really wasn't my fault. I had the whole job planned perfectly when that daily had to come downstairs just when I was working on the safe. Yes, that was too bad. For him, yeah. For you, too. Well, why, Professor? All I did was... <coughs> I hey, cut that out. The music box daily had. It's still in his safe. <coughs> Professor, don't slap me around. I couldn't help it. Ah! Professor. It was a beautiful thing. A picture of it was in the paper Sunday. A lovely thing. 200 years old. I could kill you. I could... Professor, please, give me another chance. I'll get it for you. Honest, I will. I'll get it for you tonight. Oh, no, you won't. It'll be a long time before I trust you with another assignment. Billy will get me that music box. Billy won't fail me. We'll wait a few days until the excitement of Daly's death dies down. And then Billy will get it for me. Honest, Professor, I'm sorry. You're sorry. You don't know what being sorry is. I know. I don't have that music box. <laughs> Milo Vance speaking. Markham Vance, I think our long association has begun to do me some good. Really, Markham? I assure you I'm completely complimented. What's going on? Have you seen the papers this morning? Yes, why? You probably missed this item, but there was a little notice saying that one of the most rare and valuable music boxes ever to come to this country is on sale at Joseph's Antique Shop. That is interesting. Interesting? It's going to break our case, these music box murders, Vance. But you see what'll happen? Suppose you tell me. All right. You yourself said that the music boxes are the keys to the recent killing. Somebody is music box mad. I feel that whoever it is will try to buy that instrument at Joseph's. Either try to buy it or try to steal it. That's completely reasonable. I just saw the item in the newspaper this minute, Vance. Will you meet me at Joseph's so we can work this out together? Certainly, Markham. If you want me to, I'll meet you. Only I have an idea we'll get there just a little bit too late. Try throwing the rope, Billy. Throw it this time. Holy back around, Professor. I'm beginning to feel like a cowboy. I do good work with the rope close up, don't I? What do I have to practice throwing it for? Sometimes you can't get close enough to your victim to slip it over his neck. You see that statue on the pedestal over there? Yeah, sure. Throw the noose over the head of the statue from here. Throw it over the head and then yank it. Go ahead. Okay, Professor, but ain't that hunk of statue worth a lot of dough? You know, I I'm liable to break it when I yank if it. If breaking that statue will help you sometime on a job, Billy, it's worth what it cost me. Throw that rope. Okay, if you say so, here goes. <coughs> Holy mackerel, I done it. Good, Professor, I didn't good. Mean... You're a much better pupil than Dan is. You did a good job, Billy. And as a reward, I have a special assignment for you. Tonight. Oh, yeah? An assignment that will give me a wonderful music box and get you at least fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. What do you have to say to that? Me? <laughs> Gee, all I can say is holy mackerel. This is District Attorney Markham. The music box murder case concerns the killing of three men, all of whom owned valuable antique music boxes, two of which were stolen. We have no other clues to the identity of the killer or man in the back of the killings, but an item in today's newspaper telling of a new music box to be sold at Joseph's antique shop gave me an idea. And along with Philo Vance, I've gone to the shop and the This is one time, Vance, when I believe I've anticipated what you would have done. We have a murderer and a new music box in this store. The murderer will want that music box. We'll either get it first or get a lead to him. If you say so, Markham. I told you what I thought, though. That we'd be a little late? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. We'll know in a minute now. Coming? Definitely. 
You a pleasure, gentlemen? Uh, we're interested in that music box we read about in the papers today. Uh, we have an excellent collection of Chinese jade, should you care to My see it? My friend inquired about the music box. Oh, the music box. You know, so many people inquire about the music box. Uh, could I interest you in some antique chairs, perhaps? We have some that are 150 years old, colonial chairs. Now, let me show them to you. Now, oh, where are they? <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, uh, did you gentlemen see any chairs on the floor that are 150 years old? We don't see a chair that looks a day over 125 years. Oh. Look, my good man, what about that music box? All you've told us is that several people were inquiring about it. Oh, that, that, that's that been sold uh, first thing this morning, as a matter of fact. Look, I want to know the name and address of the purchaser of that music box. Can you give it to me? Oh, I guess if you like. <laughs> I don't even have to look it up. I can't remember a face or forget a name, as a matter of fact. The name of the man who bought that box was um, uh, John Smith. John Smith? Well, that's too bad. It is. Uh, yes, yes, it's obviously a fictitious name, and any address he gave you would be equally fictitious. Oh. Well, I'm sorry I brought you down here, Vance. I guess we'll have to find some other way to look for our killer. I didn't mind coming with you, Markham. And as for finding some other way to look for our killer... I think I've thought of a way to have him look for me. Hold still, Dan. Please hold still. Honey, that water hurts. Water won't hurt anything. Got to fix your face. It's pretty badly bruised. It should be. After the professor slapped me around for messing up that daily job last night, he had Billy go to work on me. That guy doesn't fool. Ooh! I'm oh, sorry, darling. Dan, let me ask you something. Oh, some other time. Now, you'll still stay with the professor, regardless of what he's done to you and had Billy do to you? Sure, why not? I messed up a job. I deserve what I got. Nobody's got the right to hurt you, Dan. Nobody at all. I take that back. One person has. Who's that? I have the right to hurt you, Dan. Because I love you so much. <laughs> Vance, what's the plan you have for making the music box murderer come to you? Oh, I'm afraid I'll never be a carpenter, Markham. Even though I think that nail I just drove into the wall will hold this pulley. <laughs> nice evading of it. <laughs> Second company? No. It might be my secretary, Miss Deering. She might have brought some papers from the office. I'll see. Good enough. Tell Ellen hello for me if you're not inviting her in. Ellen wouldn't wait for an invitation. Yes? You're a follow, Vance? Why, yes. Won't you come in? I must come in. I've got to talk to you. Vance, you... Oh. My friend, District Attorney Markham. Hello, Mr. Markham. Hello. Maybe it's just as well he's here. Listen, Vance. Do you want to know who's in back of these rope murders? We most certainly do, young lady. Who are you? Well, the name is May Terry, only that won't mean anything to you. N now listen carefully. There's a man named Professor Davis who planned all three of the murders. Catch him and you'll have the real killer. How do you know that? Well, never mind how I know... All I'm telling you is that I'm getting even for something the professor did. A and there's a stooge involved in this. Somebody named Billy something or other. He's the muscle man for the professor. He's the guy who uses the rope. This is very interesting, Miss Terry. Do you know where the professor and his accomplice can be found? No, but that shouldn't be too hard for you to find out. That's one reason I didn't go directly to the police. I came to Vance because I have information but no proof. No idea where this professor is. And you say that the professor has an assistant named Billy who committed all the crimes? Yes, that's right. Oh, they'll deny it, of course, if and when you find them. But they did the killings together. The professor wanted music boxes. That's what he wanted out of the murders. We figured as much. But you don't know where we can find either the professor or Billy? No. Well, it seems to me, Vance, that we're indebted to this young lady for her information. But she hasn't helped us very much. We're in exactly the same situation we were in before she came. Not exactly, Markham. We now know what we only suspected before. Can you reach Sergeant Heath on the telephone? Of course, why? You'll need him to make an arrest, won't you? You see, I have a way that's guaranteed to make the music box murderer face the music. You're crazy, May. You're mad. You couldn't have gone to Philo Vance and told him about the professor. Oh, no, that's what you think, Dan. Nobody's going to slap my man around and get away with it. I also told Vance that the professor stooge Billy did all three murders. Do you hear that, Dan? All three. And Vance, believe me, you're in the clear now. Get out of town fast. I'll meet you somewhere. Oh, why did you do a stupid thing like that, May? You spoiled everything. 
The professor will find out about it. Neither of us will be safe then. We'll be... Dad. What? Dad, darling, what's happened? Uh, Dad. Hang up the phone, Billy. Dad, yes, answer me, please. Mighty fine rope throwing. Here's our ex-ally, Dan, where he should be and the way he should be. Holy banker, uh, look, that, that was a good toss I made with that rope, huh? Yes, it was. And now, Billy, we're ready for our next assignment. Well, wh what do we do about the dame this guy Dan was going to marry? Oh, we'll take care of her, of course. But our next move has to do with a music box. Oh, again? Yes, Billy, again. I have the name and address of the purchaser of that special music box Joseph's antique shop had on sale. And we're going to get it from the purchaser. Holy mackerel. He, he ain't going to have it long, is he? <laughs> no, he's not. And we won't be bothered with Dan on this job. It's just as well we got rid of him. I think he would have made trouble for us. Uh, he won't make no trouble for anybody anymore. No, that's right. Now, Billy, as for the job tonight. Yeah. We go to apartment 21 at 50 London Avenue. The apartment belongs to a man named John Smith. Oh, you, you got the name and address from the uh, antique shop owner, huh? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. We will go there. You carry your rope, and I'll bring some money. Mr. John Smith will listen to the way my money talks, or to what your rope has to say. <laughs> kitchen door is always easier to open than a front door, Billy. This one will be opened in a second. Holy mackerel, Professor, you don't have to be so quiet. We banged on the front door of this apartment. Nobody answers. That means nobody's home. We're less likely to be seen working the kitchen entrance, Billy. Ah, there. That did it. Yeah. Uh, one good thing about picking a lock, we can always bolt the door behind us and make sure of not being interrupted. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is John Smith's apartment, where we are going to get that music box I want. Apparently, the tenant is out. And that music box is either in a safe or the living room. Which we're in right now. Now, how do we Billy, find Billy, that music? Look, huh? on that table, it's the music box. Oh, it's the most beautiful box I've ever seen. Come over here, quick. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm coming. Oh, gosh, that is pretty, ain't it? Huh? I want to hear it. Oh, now, wait till we get home. No, no, I won't. I've got to listen to it now. I'll raise the lid. <sighs> oh, Billy. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's wonderful, only not to me. Personally, I prefer swing stuff. Now, you take that damn... Hey... Somebody's in the next room. Come on, Professor, let's get out of here. Oh, I'm ready. I've got the music box. Out the front door, Billy. Hurry. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm hurried. Come on, let's get out. Oh, ah, quick, Come Professor. Ah, there's a rope around ah, your neck. I ran into a noose. Now, your hands are free. Get the noose off I'm my neck. I'm trying Hello. to get it off. You're a hurry. The quicker you get it off, the quicker I take you two down to headquarters. Get your hands up, all of you. All right. Come all on, right. come on, put them up. We don't all have right. all day. All right. Sergeant Heath, you'd better take them along. Sure, DA, anything you say. Come on, you two guys. We uh, want you both for a lot of murders. And you both ought to thank your lucky stars that rope you ran into didn't choke one of you to death. Yes, they should, Heath. They should thank their lucky stars for that. And we should thank Philo Vance for trapping them for us. Although I still don't know how he did it. <laughs> It is a pretty instrument, isn't it, Markham? Vance, I want to know a lot of things, none of which has anything to do with that music box. How did you get the professor to come up to your apartment so Sergeant Heath and I could grab him? I asked you two to be there. You were there, weren't you? Of course, and we have their confessions. But what brought them to your place? I thought they'd head for the apartment of whoever that John Smith really was. They did. I was John Smith, Markham. I beg your pardon? I saw that item in the newspaper before you called me about it. Went to Joseph's, bought the music box, and gave the name of John Smith, but my real address. I knew the music box would prove a lure our murderer couldn't resist. Well, that's fine. <laughs> and I thought I was so clever in reasoning out a plan to trap the professor. It was a fine plan, only you thought of it first. Oh, I just got the newspaper before you did, Markham, <laughs> that's all. 
I rigged up that rope and pulley in my place, changed the name on my mailbox to John Smith, and had you and Sergeant Heath planted there. Because I was relatively certain that the professor would come calling. And then, if he heard a noise, would be hastily leaving. Well, Heath made the noise all right on your instructions, Vance. And the professor and Billy ran right into the noose you had fixed up by your door. I wonder how the professor felt when that rope was around his neck. Probably he regarded it as an omen of things to come. When he ran into the middle of my rope, he knew he was at the end of his rope. That's right. And we're at the end of the music box murder case. <laughs> 